What's behind the latest mania to censor critics of Islam? Well, Ikra Khalid is part of it, but she's just the front man. She's a Pakistan-born Muslim MP for the liberals who is a Muslim political activist on campus. She still celebrates Pakistani values with Pakistani diplomats. I, I wish she'd celebrate more Canadian values like freedom of speech and the separation of mosque and state. Uh, Khalid is the MP who introduced M103, that's the motion condemning Islamophobia and calling on the government to prepare a report to eliminate it using the full power of the state. The phrase she uses is a whole of government approach, which I think means everything from the CBC to the RCMP to the Canada Revenue Agency to our foreign policy. Yeah, that sounds more like a Pakistani approach to censorship than a Canadian approach to freedom. Don't take it from me. Here, listen to a couple of Pakistani Canadians who came to our recent anti-M103 rally. I'm from Pakistan and I'm a Christian and uh, my family came here looking for a better life for themselves. We immigrated to this country and we were so blessed to be in a place where our freedoms were, were well, we had freedoms. Where we come from, we definitely did not. Um, and we also have Sharia law over there, including the blasphemy law, which is just an obscene dra draconian law um, that has just destroyed the lives of so many minorities and so many Muslims. And so. This, to us, is kind of the opening towards that law. We need a freedom of speech. Even in Muslim countries, some countries, they don't like blasphemy law. Why the, uh, Trudeau is bringing here? Yeah, why is it that all of Trudeau's Muslim MPs seem to be of the authoritarian Sharia variety instead of the freedom-loving secular variety? Well, that's the thing. Omar al-Jabra, who ran Trudeau's Muslim campaign for him, is a radical himself. Al-Jabra used to run the anti-Semitic Canadian Arab Federation that literally called for the legalization of Muslim terrorist groups like Hamas and Hezbollah. And Trudeau put him in charge of his Muslim outreach campaign. That's why Trudeau never says anything moderate when he goes into mosques, because he wants the radical vote. He even boasts about going to the Saudi-funded extremist Wahhabi mosque in Montreal, which was named by the Pentagon as a place where Al-Qaeda recruited terrorists. Here, listen to Trudeau brag about that mosque by name. I spend a lot of time running from the uh, Bangladeshi to the Pakistani to the uh, Maghrebi <laughs> to the uh, to the uh, Asuna Wahhabi mosque. To, I cover I cover all of, all of the different communities. So you've got Muslim radicals like Ikhra Khalid and Omar al-Jabra, and you've got Trudeau's Muslim vote strategy. But I think there's something much more specific behind this. Let me draw your attention to a press release issued by Trudeau last September at the United Nations. Headline, Canada, UNHCR, and the Open Society Foundations seek to increase refugee resettlement through private sponsorship. Now, there's a lot in there that I'm not going to get into now. UNHCR stands for High Commission on Refugees. But, but I want to tell you what the Open Society Foundations are. That's George Soros's political wing. George Soros, the billionaire leftist extremist who funds everything from Black Lives Matter to outright street revolutions overseas. They boast on their own website that they've spent 13 billion dollars on their politics, and that's just through this one arm. That doesn't include other tentacles like political donations. So let's look at this press release again, a Government of Canada press release about Muslim migrants. I'm going to focus on just one of the three main points. Quote, the new joint initiative has three primary objectives. Provide a vehicle that mobilizes citizens in direct support of refugees and encourages a broader political debate that is supportive of refugee protection. And finally, this project will complement other initiatives under development elsewhere in the world, also aimed at mobilizing citizens and creating complementary pathways for admission of refugees." Unquote. So Justin Trudeau and the government of Canada have officially teamed up with George Soros, not only to bring Muslim migrants to the West, but to engage in a massive propaganda exercise and political exercise. Both Soros money and Canadian taxpayers' money will be used, not just for the Muslim migrants themselves, but for political organizing, mobilizing citizens, 
in support of Muslim migration. George Soros is directing Canada's pro-Islam propaganda, pro-Islam politics. Do you doubt he's part of the new campaign to, quote, eliminate Islamophobia, to use the language of M103? And just before Christmas, the government of Canada had a big conference to start implementing this Soros-UN Trudeau agreement. A three-day meeting in Ottawa with 90 political activists. Let me read the last sentence of the official Government of Canada press release. They also committed to working together to make sure that the global narrative on refugees is a positive one. Oh, so, so this wasn't actually just about helping refugees. It's about managing the global narrative to make sure people only say positive things about Muslim migration, and the government of Canada is, is part of this. Look at the bottom of that press release. Gregory A. Maniatis, a senior Soros officer. Now, I've thumbed through Maniatis's Twitter feed. It's a shocking collection of anti-Trump derangement syndrome, I'd call it. He's deranged, and that's no surprise. That's fine. Everyone can have their opinions about Donald Trump, but why is a New Yorker a Soros staffer, a left-wing extremist from a foreign country, running Canadian immigration policy. Trudeau and Soros have been friends for a while. We don't know how long, but this loving photo was taken shortly after Trudeau was elected when he went to Davos. Soros collects politicians like Trudeau, not just in Canada and the US, but Europe too, where he agitates against conservatives and hires lawyers and political organizers and spin doctors to push for mass Muslim migration. That's not speculation or conspiracy theory. It is contained in this Open Society's document, which was leaked by DC Leaks, similar to WikiLeaks. It shows that Soros spent, through Open Societies alone, more than $8 million in the past couple of years through 33 different front groups to help battering ram the way through Europe for two million Muslim migrants. But really, why pay eight million bucks to 33 front groups when Justin Trudeau will do it for you for free? Well, maybe not for free. Justin Trudeau actually doesn't do a lot for free, whether it's speaking at charity events where he charges 20 grand or hiring his two nannies on the taxpayer's dime. He always makes sure there's a cut for himself, doesn't he? Uh, just like how he kept taking cash for his Trudeau Foundation from foreign donors after he became liberal leader, and even after he became prime minister. We only accidentally found out that Trudeau was taking free luxury vacations for him and his family and friends from the billionaire Aga Khan flying on that private helicopter, vacationing on his private billionaire's island in the Bahamas, taking his friends and fundraisers with him. I wonder if Justin Trudeau has ever flown on Soros' private jets or vacationed at Soros's private getaways. I wonder if Soros has funded any of Trudeau's favorite NGOs like Canada 2020 or the Trudeau Foundation. We know that Soros funds Black Lives Matter, which now has street gangs in Toronto shouting at police, bringing racism and discord to our streets as Soros is expert at doing. I wonder what else George Soros is funding in Canada and I wonder if we'll ever find out. Right after Donald Trump was elected, George Soros announced he was giving $10 million to fight against what he calls incendiary rhetoric. Incendiary rhetoric. Gee, that sounds a lot like motion M103, doesn't it? But really, we don't have to wonder. We don't have to speculate about this, do we? Because the government of Canada is putting out public press releases about it. Justin Trudeau will obediently, no, that's not the right word, he will happily obey George Soros' wishes, and he will put the power of the Canadian government towards stamping out political commentary that Soros doesn't like. There's no need for a conspiracy theory, my friends. It's a conspiracy fact.